Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney magic. Whether they be singers, actors, imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, actor Dave Storrs, to the show. Welcome, Dave. Thank you very much, Tammy. Thank you. I'm glad to welcome another actor on the show because you've been in several different ABC Family TV shows. You know, I've seen you a couple times in various different episodes of different shows. So it's really nice to finally, you know, put the voice to the to the face, kind of, <laughs> and have a conversation with you today. So thank you for coming on. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited. Um, and uh, yeah. I thought maybe we'd get started and talk about your beginnings in acting. Are, are you formally trained or did you kind of do summer stock acting, kind of like I did? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, no, actually, I went to I went to school at Ball State University, which is a, a liberal arts college in Muncie, Indiana. Um, I spent about ten years in Indiana after I moved from New Jersey. Uh, to, I went to Indiana, um, and then I spent four years in an undergraduate program studying acting. Uh, I got my bachelor's of science in acting and a minor in tele. Communications, uh, but then after graduating from uh, with a theater degree, uh, I moved out to Los Angeles. I did an internship as a, as a casting assistant with a casting agency, and then spent a year as an assistant to a manager who represented actors. And then I kind of uh, stumbled across Groundlings, uh, which is an improv uh, school out here in Los Angeles. Um, and I and then I uh, did the Sunday Company. That's uh, for a year and a half and just sort of fine tuned my improv and uh, sketch comedy and writing skills. What is your thought process or or work process through developing an idea and then kind of following through and seeing what works and doesn't work? Um, You know, I what I kind of do is I in terms of my sketch comedy um, and 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 in Groundlings, it it was not a typical uh, Groundling trait. It, I wasn't a huge character actor. Um, and, they, and, they're, and Groundlings is sort of known for, for their character actors. I mean, Kristen Wiig, uh, Stephanie Courtney, you, Mike McDonald, Melissa McCarthy. You have all these amazing people who do three-dimensional uh, grounded character work. And I sort of approach uh, my sketch comedy as, as almost like relationships. <laughs> Uh, I love relationship sketches. I love the nuances of, um, uh, of rela- you know, uh, well, I find a lot of comedy in, in how people interact with each other. And, and so I, I would write sketches a lot of times that are based in a relationship or a relationship theme of a couple fighting or a couple, you know, out to dinner arguing over a tip or, you know, it, it was one of these little, I would have these just nuances and I would sort of unpack um, themes that I experienced in my real life with my own personal relationships and I would, I would either heighten them a little bit but I would always play a sort of a version of myself in the sketches and, and the writing would be more the humorous aspect of the sketches versus a, a character trait. Does that make sense? I would, I, like I wrote a sketch where a, a woman uh, we were coming back from uh, our time out in the evening, and we had uh, it made it clear that we ran into an ex girlfriend of mine. Um, and and the the actress, the, you know, my girlfriend in the scene was like, "Wow, she, you know, she's she's really pretty. You know, she's you know prettier than I am." And I and and I wouldn't correct that in my character, but then it became this whole sort of breakdown of like, "You like her?" I'm like, "I never said I liked her." You said and. So it was these sort of arguments and, and that I think maybe a lot more couples have that I would unpack versus 
my character who, you know, was suspicious of everybody or who liked to smell whipped cream, you know, does that, so, but I would always play sort of just me in, in a relationship <laughs> and everyone would be like, are you, how do you ever date if that's, cause I, I wouldn't play this giant character. They'd be like, is that really you? Any comedians that come to mind as, as people that you looked up to when you were watching them at a younger age or still to this day? Um, you know what? I would say probably Jerry Seinfeld uh, and his observation. I, I loved him as a stand-up. And I loved it that he, he was just really looking at life and unpacking the inconsistencies or sort of the ironicness of life that he sees and, and, and something that's very relatable. That everyone goes through, you know. I think that's growing up, Jerry Seinfeld, and even his sitcom. You know, he just he played himself and surrounded himself with these sort of uh, amazing characters. You know, when you're when you're filming these TV shows, it's not as long as it takes to make a movie, of course. Um, but do you have any funny stories about being on set? Or- um, well, yeah, I. <laughs> So I do this show called uh, Fameless, and um, it's a prank show. So it's a little bit of exposed camera. It's not really a hidden camera. There are aspects of that. But um, I, I normally play these characters um, that, are, that are generally designed to frustrate, annoy um, the, the people. That we call them marks, the person who, who is not in on what's really going on. Um, so I, I normally play these, these sort of... Uh, roles that elicit either them to get frustrated at me or have a a terrible opinion about me. But we were doing this one bit in it where it was called, uh, the bit was called Bride Along. It already aired. And basically the show was you're going to come along. The person, the mark, was going to be the maid of honor and the spokesman for our bride. And they were going to marry me, a groom, who they had never seen before. So they were sort of the advocate to the bride. And I dressed up in a tuxedo. I got there. I got in a wardrobe before the mark got there. And the entire crew was like, oh, my gosh, Dave, you clean up very well. And everyone, I was feeling really good about myself. And when the mark came, uh, without any, she went, it was time to meet me, the groom, for the first time. And I cannot tell you her reaction to just seeing me, not interacting with me at all. And keep in mind, I, I have not had one interaction with her. It was like, it was insane how she said I was a creep. She's like, like right off the bat, like how, and it was just a, a monologue of how terrible I was <laughs> for this bride to marry me. And uh, it was, I, and I'm of course hearing all of this in my earpiece and the control room is just laughing. Um, and it was just one of those things where like the least, like how, how people just would, I don't know. It, it, it was just the most unexpected thing, uh, to have this woman just, uh, have a terrible opinion about me right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of fameless, you know, not only are you an actor on the show, you're, but you're a story producer. Now this is a show on true TV mm-hmm. and uh, David Spade also works on it and you have a, a great group of people makes me laugh a lot you know you're always setting up pranks for people who who do not know what's going to happen next whatever scenario it is so tell us how the show became what it is today sure yeah no it, david spade's executive producer um him and ben silverman and an executive producer kevin healy who is uh, one of the eps of scare tactics uh came up with an amazing uh idea for a show basically we take people Put them on either a reality show or a terrible reality show, which is fake, and something horrible happens. We uh, come up with scenarios. So every every we do like three or three different shows an episode. So they're about seven minutes long in edited in version. But basically, people come and they think they're the star of a re- of their own reality show, and we sort of mess with them in various ways. Uh, and I am a writer. Uh, we have, a, uh, along with some other, well, story producer because it's uh, it's reality. We, we're not writing any dialogue because the person who shows up, we you know, doesn't know what's going on. And so we basically, it's called a hidden cam or exposed camera, hidden intent. Um, and we have a lot of fun on the show. We play. We get to play. Uh, in the play in the in the sandbox of reality television, and I, I think season one started out more of 
also commenting on sort of the the, the tropes of some of these terrible reality shows uh, that, that are on air. It's, it's a lot of fun. My favorite sketch would have to be the, the one where you have two uh, talent competitors. Uh, you are one of them, and then they bring in the other individual, and then you have to literally do your talent uh, at the same time and in front of three different judges who decide which one is, is, is the best one. And I forget what you're doing. I think you're doing something with, like, fishing or... This was sort of our uh, homage to American Idol and The Voice and The X Factor and all that stuff. It was called Talent Face-Off. And we told the mark that that's all we told them. We keep them in the dark as much as possible. But you're going to go in. You're going to perform your talent. You're going you're to be competing against uh, other talented people. And it's called Talent Face-Off. And so we bring these people in. And what we don't tell them until at the very, you know, what we don't tell them in, until the very last moment is that they'll be doing their talent at the same time <laughs> against someone else, which you know, was me or Lance uh, Crawl, who also is an actor on the show. Um, basically, I played electric guitar, and uh, Lance then, you know, so we, we'd, we'd run through a bunch of these people, and Lance played a karate instructor. <laughs> His talent was. Uh, a karate or jujitsu and he would smash boards and, and do a bunch of karate moves while up uh, while these marks would try to play their guitar or sing uh and, and so just getting capturing that moment of realization of the mark going oh wait what i gotta uh, and having to deal with someone doing their talent at the same time and david spade was a judge and um liz carey and uh, yeah, so it was it was a lot of fun. He, and David Spade uh, and I and I just met him on this show. He is not um, he he's a little shyer than I would imagine him being when it comes to these pranks. And uh, he has a very big heart. And and he just uh, I think there's a, there's a part of him that feels bad um, on, on some of these days where he's there on set. Like he's it, not that he's uncomfortable with it, but. He's super shy or doesn't think that he can pull it off, which is, which is a, a completely different than the persona that I, I saw him with before doing the show. You know, how are you guys always figuring out different types of pranks to do? Because you are having another season coming up. Yes, we are having another season. We got uh, 10 or 12 episodes more that we're doing, and we just started shooting this week. Uh, we've had six weeks of uh, writers come in, and we and I'll tell you, it's it's very daunting, to be honest with you, um, because this is such a sh this is a show that has such a narrow lane uh, in terms of creative that you can write for the show. Because unlike uh, other hidden cameras, like when I I wrote on or story produced on Scare Tactics, you had the genre of of scary movies, and and you had you had sci-fi, you had a little bit of government conspiracy, you had mobsters. There, there was there was a lot of um, a lot of avenues you could develop a hidden camera bit around, um, and it, th that is to me is is the hardest part of this show is is the writing. And, the, and coming up with these fake shows and these concepts. Because it, if you think about it, we're really coming up with three different reality shows that could possibly have to be legitimate enough to fool a mark to think that this is, could be on air. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Well, what other projects are you, are you working on besides Fameless that you can talk about? Um, what other projects? Well, I'm working on, I just, uh, I, I'm go, sort of dipping my toe back into scripted television. I have a writing partner. We sold a pilot to Warner Brothers a couple years ago. Um, and we have just, uh, sold another pilot to Comedy Central. Um, and it was just announced a couple weeks ago. So we are, I'm currently writing that. I just, as a writer, maybe I might do a little part in it. Uh, but basically it's called Legalish and it's about a juror. Uh, who sort of uh, found himself on the longest civil case in history as a juror. And he's kind of found his jam as a juror member. And uh, so it's sort of, he's befriended every blue collar worker in the courthouse. And it sort of follows this guy and his world um, as, as a juror on the longest civil case in, uh, ever in America. Having a, you know, having a blast doing it.
So. It really sounds exciting, and I and I only wish the best of luck to you guys. Thank and, you. and hopefully, we'll have you back on the show to talk more about a series when it hopefully comes to air. That would be great. I would love that. I would. You're the. You'd be my first interview, Tammy. You bet. Oh, that's so sweet of you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> and yeah. I and I think we should end the show with three Disney questions. I always ask my guests. Sure. And we'll start with the first one of the Fab Three. We'll start with the Donald one, which is, as a child, what Disney film was one of your favorites to see in the movie theaters? Okay. Uh, I, uh, my favorite one was uh, Thumper. Bambi, yes. Okay, so, was, so Thumper, <laughs> in my mind, it was, it's really Thumper's movie. <laughs> um, uh, He's just, a cutie. You know, I love the character work. Maybe that's why I've gone into character work as an actor. And our goofy question, what Disney character do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Um, I would say uh, Goofy. Um, and <laughs> I think he's laid back enough and he seems to be like he would never question anything I did. I think he, he would be my partner in crime. And finally, our Mickey question. If I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? It's got to be Let It Go. My, I have my daughter, uh, my daughter uh, just discovered it. And it's so <laughs> funny. There was a phenomenon that happened when she was too young. But she gets on the iPad and uh, she starts, she knows Elsa and Anna and knows all the characters. Uh, and uh, it's a, I, I, you know. I would have to say that. Let it go. Well, it was so great to talk to you, Dave. Let me plug your website, which is davestores.com. And yes. listeners can also follow you on Twitter. And I think your handle is at Dave Stores as well, correct? That is correct, yes. And we can follow along. And, and when Famous comes back on, you know, Dave and I would always tweet at each other because I was, yes. like, I was, I couldn't help myself. I was like, this is so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I really have a blast. I try to live tweet all the shows and, uh, or all the, all the airings. And it's, you know, it's, I'm just, it's a lot of fun to, to see people uh, interact with it on, on Twitter. And, uh, all, you know, because you, you sit in a room. Uh, and and you work on this thing for months on end, and you in, you're in an edit bay, and you you never know. You're like, am I crazy? Are people going to think this is funny? <laughs> so it's just it's really it's a really rewarding experience. I found a little stressful to live tweet, um, but you get uh, immediate feedback from yes. fans, so yes. it's it's always it's always great to like see that they're also appreciating it too. So yes, for sure. I, and it's, 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 I, I like it too, Tammy, because with you and, and some of these other people who, who jumped on the first season, it really is like you guys were discovering the show um, and like sort of like uh, ushering uh, sort of this whole experience in for me, uh, you know, because no, you know, we unleashed it to the world and we had no idea how, how it would go. And it's really fun to see you guys jump on board, like, from, from the first episode. eyeliner. I don't want to hear it. That's, you know, very generous.